everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a band called Super Tramp. Oh my gosh, everybody knows Breakfast in America. What a wonderful album that is. But I'm going to go through their studio catalog. I'm not going to talk about uh, any of the live albums, and I'm not really going to focus on too many compilations, because there are many live albums and compilations out there. I'm just going to stick with the studio stuff. And we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, 1970, when they released their self-titled album. Album. The leaders of the band, of course, were Roger Hodson and Rick Davis. Now, the rest of the band were different on this album. This album is really that sort of first step type album. They were coming out of that late 60s thing. They didn't know whether they wanted to be blues or psych or folk. So they were, they were just doing it all at once. And it's a cool album. You can tell already that their songwriting styles were different. Uh, Rick Davis was really sort of rooted and serious, you know, the kind that would sit down with a cup of tea and write everything out in calligraphy. Whereas Roger Hodgson was like, oh, oh gosh, oh yeah, and, and was like all hyper and, and trying to grab as many ideas from somewhere and, and create something new and exciting. And those two really different songwriting styles blended together really well. It's a little rough in these days because they were so far apart. So this was 1970 Super Tramp. Definitely an album to check out to experience the early years. But 1971, out comes the album Indelibly Stamped. This was a big step forward. It was a whole different lineup uh, apart from Hodgson and Davis. And uh, still, they were still in that transitionary phase, uh, discovering what they wanted to do, which direction they wanted to go, how each of the songwriting styles were going to be playing off each other, all that kind of stuff. But it's still a, a very good album. I think it's more focused than the first album. They were still in search of a sound. Down. Now, for the next three years, you heard nothing from Supertramp. But 1974 comes along and Crime of the Century. This is the album that really clicked for them. Uh, not only did Roger Hodgson and Rick Davis write a set of just exceptional songs better than they had on the first two albums, but they had a whole new lineup that really gelled. Uh, on this album, uh, by the way, you're going to find, of course, Hodgson and uh, Davis. You're going to find John Halliwell, uh, Dougie Thompson, and Bob Sebenberg. And this album, of course, features some of the, uh, really, the early FM hits, uh, like School and uh, Bloody Well Right, Dreamer, Rudy. It's a really fun album, really nice. This was really when the magic gelled. The magic really started to take hold. It wasn't perfect yet, but it was getting there. The next year, 1975, out comes Crisis, What Crisis? Another album that moved them forward even more now. It didn't have the big hits, uh, but there are some great songs on the album, uh, including Sister Moonshine and Ain't Nobody But Me, Lady, Two of Us. But this was moving even closer to a big breakthrough. Now, they were already selling uh, because of the previous album. And then this album just helped to build their audience even more. And it wasn't until 1977 that Even in the Quietest Moments came out. And again, this great album has Give a Little Bit, which was another big hit for them. Downstream, uh, the title track from now on. This is an album where they're, they're essentially there. They have that magic. They have that chemistry everything's working and they sound absolutely wonderful even though Hodgson was searching the skies and the stars for musical inspiration and Davis was more rooted and earthy uh, it really came together and their and their styles were really joined at the hip uh, and it was really working but two years later came the album that we all know and love uh, in fact, it's one of the most perfect albums uh, in the classic rock genre, whatever you want to call it. It's called Breakfast in America. And we all succumb to its charms. I remember the logical song. Just the moment I heard that, I had to go out and I had to buy the 7-inch single. I didn't even care about the album. I just wanted the logical song. And I played it over and over and over again. And still, the minute that song starts, it just fills me with chills nowadays. I mean, come on. You're, you know, you're talking Gone Hollywood and Logical Song and uh, Goodbye Stranger, uh, the, the title track, um, Take the Long Way Home, which is a song I can listen to on repeat 
at least 20 times in a row. This is such a powerful, wonderful album. By the way, all the stuff I've been showing you have, have all been the remasters. No bonus tracks, but it just wonderful, gorgeous sound. Breakfast in America was a huge record. It just put them over the top, made them worldwide superstars. They followed it up with a very good album called Famous Last Words, which was coincidentally uh, the last album that Hodgson and Davis would work on together. Uh, but, you know, the big song here, of course, was It's Raining Again. And it's also got My Kind of Lady, uh, Don't Leave Me Now. It's not a great record compared to Breakfast in America, but what is? But it's still a wonderful addition to your Super Tramp collection. I still highly recommend it. It does have sort of a slight 1982 type production, uh, but still the songs are what matters. Of course, Roger Hodgson left after this album, and then the other four members chose to continue, and out comes the album Brother Where You Bound. This came out in 1985. Of course, the song here that everybody knows, it was a big, uh, I think, MTV hit, was uh, Cannonball. Uh, this is an album. It's not as poppy as the Roger Hodgson stuff. Like I said, Rick Davis was sort of a more straight down the line, earthy songwriter. His melodies were not as immediate as Roger's. Still, after a couple of listens, you get hooked into the world of Super Tramp again. Uh, it's a little bit different world. Of course, the chemistry is different now that you've taken a big piece of the band out, uh, but it's still an album worthy of your collection. By the way, guests on the album include Dave Gilmore and Steve Gorham, both who play guitar on uh, different tracks. Took another two years, but out comes Free as a Bird, which uh, continued along the same lines as Brother Where You Bound, but I thought that this was a better album song-wise. I think with Brother Where You Bound, they were sort of dealing with songs they were already maybe working on before Roger quit, but this is an album I think that is uh, has, has more of a fresh take because it's a fresh batch of songs, uh, so definitely worth checking out there that's 1987 free as a bird it took another 10 years before the band returned with some things never change this came out in 1997 now the band had been touring and they uh added a couple of members like mark hart who had been in a band called combination he played with crowded house in a way he became a substitute roger hodgson he wasn't filling in roger hodgson's spot but he was playing guitar keyboards sharing vocals doing all that kind of stuff. They also added Cliff Hugo on bass because Dougie Thompson had left. And they added a guitar player, Carl Verheyen. And there's that the great song on here. Uh, my favorite is called You Win, I Lose. And, the, and they move down the same path, but they're loosening up and they're not trying to be the super tramp of old. They're just playing Rick Davis's songs and, and carrying on. And, and uh, it's a really good album. The thing is, a lot of people go like, there were nothing without Roger Hodson. Well, you're wrong, you know, because... Each of these albums after Roger left are definitely worth listening to, and they have songs that are just fantastic. 2002, out comes the album Slow Motion. Pretty much the same lineup, and this has a track called Over You, which is fantastic. I mean, there's more tracks than that, but I'm trying to make this video quick. And that is it in terms of new Super Tramp studio releases. I really encourage you to check out. Of course, if you don't own Breakfast in America, then you're not human because everybody needs to own Breakfast in America. But if you like Breakfast in America or you maybe have a best of, I say dip in and, and if what I've described sounds interesting to you, check it out. You're probably going to be able to find a lot of this on vinyl, at least the earlier stuff and some of this later stuff I don't think ever came on vinyl. But I will show you one cool compilation. It's a two CD collection called Retrospectacle. Now I believe that this might be the same compilation that came out here in the U.S., under the name Gold, but it's a great two CD compilation spent in their pretty much their entire career. The interesting thing about this is it has a song called Land Ho, which was an early B side that never appeared on any album. And this is the only place that you can find it on CD, to my knowledge. So, a retrospectacle, Super Tramp, a great two CD collection. Definitely worth your while. But that's not all. I just want to go through Roger's solo releases here. Um, let me see here. In the Eye of the Storm came out in 1984. This was his first album after Super Tramp. And uh, Had a Dream, Sleeping with the Enemy is this long, epic, wonderful, great, weird track. It's the thing about Hodgson is he just had so many ideas and he just let them fly. Just let them rip. Um, now this is very 80s production. So the album can sometimes be held back by the, the very dated production but his creativity his ideas his excitement uh his his journey is just so interesting and so fun that this is definitely an album 
worth checking out. He followed that up in 1987 with Hi Hi. That's H-A-I, H-A-I. And this is even more 80s production uh, than the previous one. Sometimes it's hard to get through that, but when you start connecting with the songs, uh, you just fall in love with them and you forget about the production uh, because, like I said, he's such a creative and, and his songs are so warm and, and, and very giving. He's, he's, he's that type of artist. But what's interesting is there's a song on this album, as you can see there, Land Ho, which is uh, his solo version of that one B-side track that was on here. So you get two different versions of Land Ho if, if you go collect the entire Roger Hodgson and Supertramp solo career. 1997, put out an album called Rites of Passage. Now me, I'm not a live album guy and I told you I wouldn't talk about live albums. But this was actually an album where it sounds both intimate and, and, and big at the same time. And he does Supertramp songs, he does solo songs, but there are songs on this release that are not released anywhere else. So that's the reason that I own it. As I said, I'm not a big fan of live releases, but I will make exception when an album has stuff you can't get anywhere else. And this is fun, but it's also emotionally powerful and, 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 and exciting. Uh, and I usually don't say that about live albums, but he's just an exceptional artist. And one more. This album came out in the year 2000. It is called Open the Door. And this is a return more to the sound of old Supertramp. The arrangements and the vocals and the melodies seems like he's stripping things down and just trying to present his songs the way he used to as opposed to trying to impress you with the wham bam of modern production and that's the last studio album that he released this is music that is so easily embraceable uh there's so much joy in the music of super tramp i don't want you to think that their music is lightweight i appreciate you sitting around and allowing me to talk about super tramp and roger and Rick and everybody else in the band. I hope this does inspire you to go out and either buy something or pull some records or CDs out of your own collection. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, I appreciate you all. And until the next time, remember me. I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.